hey guys hey guys when i say oshe you say bardess oshe bardess <laughs> no play hey guys how you doing welcome to my channel um i always forget to introduce myself so my name is valerie i'm 19 years old and today i'm gonna be filming my freshman year experience at salem state university now I filmed this video once before hey, but thanks, for whatever tracks. reason it won't upload so maybe that was just a sign for me to do better. Um, but without further ado, we're gonna get on to the video. So there's gonna be a lot of talking, I'm gonna be doing a lot of talking so I'm just gonna help you guys out because if you're like me, you like to sometimes just get to the point. I'm gonna put a timestamp somewhere there so that when you guys can just use that and refer back. I'm gonna start off with move in there. Now, um, where should I begin? I just said moving day. Like I don't, I didn't even have a place to start. So before moving day, there was a lot of communication between me and the school. Um, the communication from the school to me was just information I needed, such as the time and date of when I was gonna move in, as well as the stuff and basically the material I needed before I got to move in. So. Like I said, in that email came the time and date. So I think I was set to move in at September 1st at like between 4 and 5 p.m. was my time slot. And before you can move in, you have to have one plus two equals key. I was gonna say three, almost got me there. One plus two equals key. And so all one plus two equals key meant was that one was your medical information, two was your financial information and with those two things you could get your key so without your medical information and your financial information cleared then you weren't allowed to get your um you weren't going to be able to move in so before moving um make sure to get your financial make sure to get your school balance to zero and then make sure to have your physical and i guess like all your tests turned into the school's nurse or whatever so yeah that was before moving when it came to the day of moving, I was chilling. I mean, like, you watch YouTube videos and everybody be stressing, but I don't know if it was just me. I was relaxing. I think it was because my time slot was later in the day, between 4 and 5, and they did that by floors. So, fourth floor was between 4 and 5, and I, um, I was chilling that morning. So, I had all my stuff packed, so when it came down to, you know, time to leave, I just put the stuff in the car. We took two cars, partly because my whole family came, so we ended up taking the two cars. Um, I think all my stuff could have fit in one car had it just been me and my father, me and my mom, but my whole family came, so I ended up taking two cars. Before I even got to school, um, I'm Nigerian, and you know, a lot of prayer. There was a lot of prayer, but my time slot was between four and five, and between four and five, my parents were telling me, and I, at like 3.30, when we're supposed to be leaving, my parents were telling me their life story about how they were in college and how privileged I am to have the opportunity to be here in a good school and all this stuff. So they told me all this. Then they did a lot of prayer. There was a whole lot of praying. By the time I even left for school, it had been like 4.30. So now, dang, I'm going to be late. <laughs> I was, in my head, I'm like, yo, come on, guys. The reason they give you that one hour time slot is because I guess they want to give you enough time to move in. And then I'll, after the move in prop, after you move in, each floor is supposed to have a floor meeting, so that's why they give you that specific time slot. You don't want to be moving in when you're supposed to be having your floor meeting. So yeah, um, when we finally got to the school, it was like 4.55. People were still there to help me, and basically what you do is follow the directions, you pull into our, your school, and um, we pulled into the school, and we waited in line. We being my family, we waited in line and we were given the directions to pull off to the right side of the parking lot because that's where the um, move-in volunteers would come with the bins to help us. So we did that. They, we pulled in to, to the right and they came to help hey, us. We grabbed all my stuff. I mean, I felt like a princess. Like, I didn't touch anything. These people just came in and grabbed my things. They just threw all in there for me. I didn't touch anything. I was trying. But, you know, they did their job, whatever. They took me to the front um, by the door, the front entrance where you would be checked in. Now, in order to get checked into your building, you need your clipper card. Without your clipper card, you're not going to be able to get checked in. They even tell you to get your clipper card at orientation, which happens in June. Um, 
So if you don't get your Clipper card during that time of orientation and you don't get your Clipper card at all during the summer, you're not gonna be able to sign in and they're gonna have to send you back to the main campus, which is Central Campus, to go get a Clipper card. And I don't think you wanna be doing that because you just wanna be moving in. Your parents are gonna be looking at you, why don't you go get your Clipper card? And you're gonna be tight because you didn't listen. So get your Clipper card, get your one plus two equals key, and get, make sure you have all that stuff situated and make sure you have your note and your time to move in. So after I checked in, I went to the building. Um, they gave me my key, I went into the building, waited in the line for the elevator, and took myself along with some of my family and my bins and the volunteers to the fourth floor. Once we got to the fourth floor, they just put our stuff in the room and they were gone. <laughs> Shout out to dad for tipping them. Um, Yeah, so we moved in and basically after that, my parents stayed for a little bit. My roommate got there a little bit before me. My parents stayed a little bit. They helped me like unpack a little bit and then they were do say. Yeah, so that was the moving process. I just moved my stuff in and after that, there isn't much to say besides I unpacked. Um, yeah, so that was the moving process. It wasn't very long. I tried to make that concise as possible because it's like, you see it on YouTube all the time, but yeah. Now this is orientation. It was a couple days of just intensive, mandatory, whatever. We went to the, or we, like, so basically started like eight o'clock. We went to the auditorium. It's not, orientation's not interesting at all. It was like a couple days of just nonsense. <laughs> just complete nonsense. I mean, like, we got up at eight o'clock to go to the gym, the O'Keefe gym. And we, it, they said it was mandatory. They did check us in, which was so annoying, y'all. Like, the line, for, how you gonna check in a thousand, 1.5 thousand students? And you're gonna have a, we were standing in line for like an hour, y'all. I'm not even kidding. Just to get checked in. I don't know what happens if you don't go. They said it's mandatory, so we had, we just went. Basically, all the orientation consisted of was us sitting there and listening to people. I couldn't tell you anything about orientation because it was just a complete waste of my time. Like, I feel like something's wasting my time, I don't pay attention. Uh, there were a couple speakers, they brought two people in to perform, a man and a woman. And that's all I can really say about orientation. It's not that interesting, I promise you. That's why I don't have anything on it because it was just a complete waste of my time. You're gonna have to go through it because they make you go through it. It's mandatory by the first year, first year staff. So you're gonna have to do it but it was just a complete waste of my time i believe and i could have been doing something more protective so the next thing i'll be talking about is our roommates um so lucky enough for me i went to school with two of my best friends i ended up rooming with one of them and i got really lucky in the sense because i just ended up getting to live with are you kidding now all i have to do is pray that it's charging um i ended up i had the pleasure of rooming with one of my best friends so I was really lucky in that sense. Though when it's time to go pick out a roommate, there is a system that is in place for you to do so. Um, that's also handled over the summer through an email. So you have to be checking your email over the summer because your school is gonna be sending out mad stuff and you're just gonna have to like keep tabs on it. Basically the way you can select roommates is on the housing portal. You um, go fill out information about yourself. First, you have to complete your, the roommate application. If you don't complete that, you can't get a roommate. So complete the application, which I did. You have to do it in order to get a room, in order to get a room as well. So you need to complete the application. So once you complete the application, you fill out all your little quirks and ask you questions like, well, serving, what time you go to bed, how many times you shower, mess your clean, things like that. And on the other end, somebody else is doing the same thing, answering those questions and filling out their roommate application. Um, when it comes down to picking roommates, you have, have you have the option to take things into your own hands and go find a roommate somewhere else. But if you're going to the computer portal system, they match you or you match each other through the surveys. So when your surveys match up, they link together and then you form a bond. <laughs> that was mad weird like I don't know why I did that welcome to my mind um you know maybe that visual helped actually you know you this is you and this is them and you know you just coincide together and then boom now you have a roommate 
that's that some people tell you not to live with your best friend as a roommate but personally i say if you and your best friend are like this and you have the same habits go for it my friend and i had the exact same habits we woke up the same time we ate the same thing it's you know we're both the same so we didn't have a problem of course roommates get into little petty arguments and we did too but like it was not that deep you just squash it right there and then yeah so my experience with my roommate was great uh, we didn't have any problems if a problem is to occur or if you don't like your room if you don't like your roommate or you don't like your room and you're trying to switch out you need to wait a two you need to wait two weeks before you're able to switch they put a two-week freeze i guess just for you to feel it out if after the two weeks you don't like it then you can switch but um i my recommendation is to go find a roommate yourself so you don't get paired with completely random people that you have nothing in common with because then it's going to be extremely frustrating to then wait the two weeks again and then you know then have to switch so that's really all i have for roommates i would suggest you take initiative and find your own roommate push comes to shove if you have to go through the portal system answer the questions as honestly as possible and hopefully find roommates so yeah that's roommates Whew, i'm doing a lot of talking here i hope you guys so now we're on to the topic that is going to be talked about in length because that's what we're in school for is classes so like i said i'm going to be looking down to keep track only for the classes because classes are a lot and i have to keep track of them so let's start with semester uno I always try to put in Spanish where Spanish doesn't belong. Right, semester one, I took oral communications, psychology, medical ethics, first year seminar, and biology one through two, introduction to cells. Now I'm a bio major, so that's, let's leave that there. <laughs> I don't know what to say after that. I'm a bio major, so bio is in my curriculum. Um, so taking these classes, so I'm gonna be talking about these classes individually, which is, this is gonna be long, so get comfortable, grab some coffee or something. So the first class I'm gonna be talking about is first year seminar, and I'm only gonna be talking about that because it's one of the easiest, faster classes. So first year seminar is run by the first year group, and basically the way that works is um, you have the ability to choose the first year seminar group that you are part of. So for instance, I was in the black, african-american history group <laughs> we learned about african-american history and also latin american history um the class is required you have to take it for your first year if you don't take it for your first year you're gonna have to take it your second year but you must complete it before your four years of college is over the class was super cool it was boring but it was cool um it was run by professor chomsky she was really cool she was really quiet at the same time but i mean i didn't mind her conversations in the class it was, the class is pretty much silent uh, people didn't really talk in that class um it was really me the professor and like a couple other kids that would talk and then like other kids were chipping here and there but yeah so that class was pretty it, it was pretty easy um there were a couple papers but they're nothing too difficult i mean like you could have bs this so easily she was a pretty nice professor and basically i think you got graded on effort because if you look like if you put an effort you'd be perfectly fine you do have to take the class i think there are multiple sections you don't have to take the african-american latin america course but you do have to take something and i don't really remember what the other options are but when it's time to pick you'll see um the next class i'll be talking about is medical ethics which is a philosophy course um it was a 200 level course and i really enjoyed that class only because of the case studies um, so basically we met Wednesdays and Fridays on Wednesday we would lecture Fridays we would do our case studies which were the assignments to be completed for Friday it was run by I don't remember his name oh I don't remember his name because the professor was he first day of class he came in and sat down he didn't say anything for 10 minutes then he got up and just started lecturing I said uh -uh, you're not gonna introduce yourself so I don't even know this professor's name um, he was a super boring professor. He only really cared about his class. He was one of the professors that just didn't connect with his students. So I only know him because of the class. Super boring professor, but it was a really interesting class um, outside of class. That class just required you to do case studies. And the case studies are super important. Like it's medical ethics. So it's talking about the ethics and morality within medicine. So super cool course. Boring class, but it was a cool course. Boring professor, but a cool course. Um, the next class I took was general psychology. It was super cool. I really like general psychology, actually. Um, it was taught by an amazing professor. 
ah, is it that I don't remember these professors' names or just what is it? <laughs> um, the professor was super cool. She was an Indian woman. She made me really like the class. Um, attendance was not mandatory in that class, though I went basically like 99% of the time. Um, there isn't much to say about psychology because if you took a psychology course, you would know what it's about. She made the class really fun in the sense that she was extremely active with her students. There was a lot of conversation in the class um, and it just felt really comfortable being in that class. She did a lot of good test review. So if you didn't pass her test, I don't know what you were doing, but she did a lot of good test review. So that was, that was really cool. I really did enjoy her class. I talked about being a bio major and so first semester I took bio 132 which was introduction to cells it was taught by professor free which is a male and he was a, a cool professor too he basically just did his job he just lectured it was just an all lecture class and then that class came with a lab so when you take bio 132 you have to take the lab 132 take bio 131 you take lab 131 so the lecture part of the course was cool it was a little hard adjusting to the course because it was a weird kind of dynamic in the lab class but for the lecture as far as lecture goes it was pretty straightforward we just lectured and then like oh, two exams or one exam and that was really it it wasn't super hard it was pretty it was a pretty chill class i actually really liked that lecture class because he just lectured and i really like just when you lecture just lecture and i'll take my notes the last class i'll be talking about is hell uh it's called oral communications this class i'm super disappointed in myself as well as this professor um and this is why so i took oral communication Everybody has to take oral communications. If you don't take it and graduate, you have to take oral communications. It's part of the requir requirements. Um, I didn't do, what I should have gotten in the class was an A or at least like a B plus or something. But what I got was a C plus. Now, this class pissed me off because, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say name. Okay, Professor A, I have Professor A. My roommate has Professor B within the same exact course at the same exact time as well teaching the same exact course doing the same topics in oral communications it's a speech class professor a my professor right would assign a six page essay or six page speech and i would write the six page speech and i'll perform the six page speech professor b would assign the same exact assignment but for but hers was based on effort you know what i'm saying so um my professor where i'm doing these six page speeches my roommate would be doing the same speech she would get an a now i'm not being jealous or anything but she would get an a in the court in that class or for her speech and i would get us would get like a b or a c for a speech that is the exact same speech that my roommate just did with the same exact professor you understand what i'm saying so I'm super frustrated if you know me i can talk and i though i'm nervous because i'm human like everybody else though i get nervous I, I don't really let that, when it comes to speeches and stuff, you're not gonna see that. So I'm, I speak publicly very well. So for me to get a C plus in that class, I was very frustrated. And it being my first year in college, I don't know if it was just too, I was too nervous. And I think I just went whatever the professor said because if they said it must be right. I didn't speak to the professor about the grades I was getting. So I kind of just let myself, it is what it is and you know each time i went through to say a speech i'm like yo i'll get i'm gonna get an a on this speech i'm gonna get on a's on this speech i'm gonna get an a on this speech and i'm not getting an a on the speech so um i didn't do as well as one of that class at all like i'm even thinking about retaking the class because or like talking to him or something because ain't nobody got a c plus in a speech class and these people who can't even speak english are getting a's get the hell out of here bro i was so tight we're gonna fix that <laughs> So yeah, that's how that went with oral communications. I called it hell because it was a class that gave me anxiety. The professor was nice, at, not even. He was, he was, see, I'm, I'm a nice person. He was a nice professor, but he was trash and he was not fair at all when it came to grading. When I said the, I'm gonna put the professor's name in the description but so you know not to take his class because I did not. He disrespected me with that C plus. And I was too much of a scaredy cat, too much of a freshman to say anything. So 
that's how oral communications went for me um yeah <laughs> so that's how first semester went overall first semester was pretty good first semester was good second semester was equally as good all right so that's that so i didn't talk about semester two in this video that's because i filmed and it filmed in slow-mo so then i tried to go back and see what i didn't film and i forgot to add in semester two so semester two was will not be in this video though i'm gonna be doing a series later on a college series and i guess i'll be talking about semester two in there because i didn't do it in here so i apologize for that but i guess i'll just have to do a separate video on it because i am not recording it again okay like i'm, I'm not recording it again so that's just that i just want to let you guys know so the next clip you see is me just talking about um, bio 132 from first semester, comparing it to bio 131 from second semester. So that's what you're going to be seeing in the next clip. Um, again, I do apologize for that, but I guess I'll just have to film the classes thing in a whole separate video because bio 131. Bio 131 was um, an equally good course as bio 132 it was taught by two female professors professor pop lisio and professor kilpack professor pop was my lecture professor and professor kilpack was the lab professor kilpack did an amazing job super high energy she did a great job connecting with her students she made basically the work was done for you it was just left for you to finish it <laughs> so we really appreciate that she was a super cool professor um for taking bio 131 at salem state Professor Pop, Professor Kilpack, Power Duo. Very, it was a good course. It was a good course. Um, Professor Pop taught the lecture class, and one difference between 132 and 131 was that 131 had a smaller lecture course. So Professor Pop Lizio was able to put the students together, so we were able to do group work sometimes. And when we took tests, if we didn't do, when we took tests, she would find like the five hardest questions that like everybody basically failed on the test and she put us in group work and we got to like get extra points back from the test with the help of peers and so that was cool she did a really good job and she um yeah she was just a lecture professor but she she was a lecture professor but she also like um made it so like the students could interact with each other and also learn from each other too being that it was a small class she was able to do so um now bio 131 was an intro to ecology bio 132 is intro to cells so bio 132 the main difference between the two was bio 132 was tailored to a cellular level and we just talked about everything on a cellular level and bio 131 talked about everything on an ecological level so we we're talking about like kingdoms and phylas and genus species and all that stuff um yeah that's that i don't really have anything else to say for classes um and i was talking about this earlier but i was getting sidetracked so i want to talk about the grading system all teachers have different grading systems in college which is really different though everything though your grades were put in um though you could see your grades on canvas some teachers recalculated their grades to the way that they wanted it to so i was talking about this with my english course in my english course on canvas my grade was like a 70 but when he recalculated on his own in his own spreadsheet his own way my grade ended up coming about to like 80 something so grading systems are different each teacher has a different grading system and um i thought that was really weird to adjust to and yeah is somebody in my front door summer um because I, I just breezed through this stuff but yeah basically that's all i really have for you guys today if you like this video make sure to like comment and subscribe i'm cringy make sure to like comment and subscribe guys